The Rangers' five-game winning streak is snapped. We break down a controversial moment between Igor Shesterkin and Sidney Crosby. We discuss whether Jacob Truba could be a liability, and we take a few positives out of the Rangers' first loss in nearly two weeks. You're locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 1038 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for $20 off of your first purchase. And we are, of course, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team. Every day. So the Rangers obviously not playing their best last night. They see their five game winning streak snapped by the Pittsburgh Penguins by a final score of five to two. Obviously, the Rangers rallied late, at least made a game of it, made it interesting down the stretch, but then gave up a couple of empty netters. And uh, indeed, that was the end of the five game winning streak. And one thing that certainly got everybody talking during this game that we're going to talk about right off the top of the show here was the incident, the uh, little controversial moment, I guess we could say, between Igor Shesterkin. And Sidney Crosby. And like I said, this kind of got everybody going from both fan bases. And as we know, fans of both these teams are just always so nice to each other on social media. And I assume in person as well. Um, basically, this is what happened. I mean, most of you probably saw the game. But if you did, here's a refresher. If you didn't, here's what happened. So pucks behind the Rainer net. Igor goes back there to get it. Sidney Crosby is uh, trailing the play. He's behind Igor Shesterkin. And Crosby makes some contact with Igor Shesterkin from behind. And then Igor turns around and gives Crosby a shove, you know, while the puck is coming out of the Ranger zone. That was all I saw initially. Then on the replay, because at first, you know, I, I saw Igor push him and, and thought that, you know, I wasn't really sure what caused that. I mean, there was a little bit of contact, but then on the replay, you can see clear as day what caused Igor to react that way. And that was, of course, the fact that Sidney Crosby very clearly slash Igor Shesterkin from behind on this play. Igor obviously took ex- exception, gave Crosby a shove. The intensity just so happened to be picking up in general on this shift. You had Mika and, and Russ were kind of battling each other in the corner there, you know, shouldered each other a couple times and uh, giving each other a couple of shoves. As far as my thoughts on this play, because everybody else has weighed in on social media by now, uh, so I might as well you know, add my two cents. Was this like a malicious, like irredeemable play by Sidney Crosby here? Was it suspension worthy? No, absolutely not. Um, but this is not nothing either. This is a player going behind the Rainer net and taking a basically free shot at our goalie, slashing him. I think it's at least penalty worthy. Um, this happened for really no reason uh, on the part of Sidney Crosby. You know, Igor's back there playing the puck, which obviously he has every right to do. Uh, A little bit of contact is one thing, but he slashed our goalie. And, and, you know, you kind of look at the different reactions to social media on this, and obviously we're all biased. You know, Ranger fans are biased to the Rangers. Penguin fans are biased to the Penguins. I get all that. But the comments that you were seeing, you know, from Penguin fans and whatnot, They either legitimately did not see Crosby slashing Igor on this play, which during the live shot, I didn't notice it either. Like I said, I I just saw the little bit of contact and then obviously the shove, but the slash once again was clear as day on the replay. So either the Penguin fans just never noticed the slash or they wouldn't allow themselves to see the slash on the replay just because of uh, who did it. Obviously, you know, their Lord and Savior was the one that uh, committed the slash there or they did see the slash, but to them, it's just okay because, well, it's Sidney Crosby that did it. So, you know, that doesn't really count. And look, I'm not going to call for a suspension or anything ridiculous like that. I don't think the Rangers like need to go after Crosby in the next meeting, which if they do play each other again this season, it would be in the playoffs. But, you know, whether it's in the playoffs or next season, there doesn't need to be any kind of, uh, you know, bad blood there. I mean, you obviously always have to keep an eye on Crosby. And if you can knock him around a little bit within the rules of the game, of course, uh, that's great. But I don't think there has to be any kind of like, you know, hardcore retaliation here on the part of the Rangers. But I want to uh, put this to everybody as well, because, again, Penguin fans, you know, that's their captain. And he's the guy that's been there for 
17 years, whatever it is at this point, obviously uh, to them, he can do no wrong. Can you guys imagine the reaction that Penguin fans would have if Jacob Truba went behind the Pittsburgh net and did this to Najelkovic or whoever happened to be in net for the Penguins on any given night? I, I don't think we would ever hear the end of it. Not from all of them. You know, there, there are some reasonable Penguin fans out there, but there'd be Penguin fans calling for a 10-game suspension and Jacob Truba's the dirtiest player ever and blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, and, and, you know, Crosby doesn't. It's no big deal. And, you know, you'll, you'll get Penguin fans saying things like, oh, is Igor okay? Is he going to whine about it? A comment like that coming from a Penguin fan has to be the most unintentionally hilarious thing in the history of social media because... I mean, I don't really have to explain why, do I? You guys get it. I mean, I, I think anybody that's kind of watched the Penguins in the Crosby era, era uh, you can certainly appreciate why Penguin fans talking about a player on another team wanting is objectively hilarious and just demonstrates a complete lack of uh, of any kind of self-awareness. But And by the way, you could say the same thing to, to Crosby here because Penguin fans were, you know, upset that Eeyore shoved Crosby. Well, I mean, what is, is that going to put Crosby on the shelf for a couple of weeks? He pushed him, you know, it's not like he did anything malicious there either. So I don't know. I mean, it, it is what it is. Look, things like this are going to happen between the Rangers and Penguins. I think we're all pretty much aware of it at this point. And honestly, as far as Ranger Penguin games go in recent seasons, this one was probably a little bit more on the tame side. Uh, you know, the intensity did pick up a little bit after that, and you're always going to have some skirmishes after the whistle, but there was nothing that was, you know, too crazy. As far as, you know, the Crosby slash, again, it's nothing like over the top. It's nothing on the level of like a Tom Wilson or to use a Penguin as an example. It's nothing on the level of a Matt Cook. But if you really thought that the refs were going to call, uh, call uh, Crosby for slashing on this play, then you must be new around here. Uh, there was about as good a chance of that happening as there was of them overturning Sidney Crosby's goal earlier in the game. Now, of course, with that one, that was onside or offside by a razor-thin margin. It probably could go either way. And the fact that that was the case, I mean, I don't have any serious problems with that call standing, but... You just know. I mean, they're reviewing a Crosby goal. They're not going to overturn it. And it was kind of a lengthy review. And I'm watching this, and I'm, I'm almost wondering, like, can I just fast forward through this? Do I really have to sit here for three or four minutes? They're not going to overturn it. We know they're not going to overturn it. Let's just move on. It's down to nothing, and we got to find a way to come back in this game. But, yeah, I mean, that's the final matchup of the uh, regular season between these two teams. Rangers take two out of three despite the loss last night. And as I mentioned, it's possible that these two teams could meet again in the playoffs. The Penguins are still on the outside looking in. I believe now five points out are the Penguins. And, you know, it's kind of a jumbled mess right now. There, there's quite a few teams going for just, you know, two or three spots in the Eastern Conference. And uh, it does make me kind of appreciate the fact that we've known for a long time the Rangers are going to the playoffs. And, of course, they were the first team to make it official a handful of games ago. But at least we don't have to sweat it out as far as making the playoffs. Having the best record in the East, maybe in the entire NHL. That would be great. But, you know, that's all gravy. Um, at least we know that the Rangers are going to be there. Um, so, you know, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens going forward. going to be fun to watch uh, the Rangers down the stretch and also figure out who the Ranger opponent is going to be in the first round. But as far as what happened in this game, you know, it's all good. It's Rangers, Penguins. Uh, you know, Igor's been playing very well recently. And even though he lost this game, thought he had another, you know, pretty nice showing for himself. He wasn't under a ton of fire, but made some nice saves. And really, when you look at the goals that were allowed, you know, while Igor was in net, obviously we're not going to count the two empty netters. The three goals that were allowed, basically they were all a result of subpar defense played by the Rangers. So we're going to be discussing that in just a second here, as well as what was, you know, just a fairly rough night for Jacob Truba is probably the nicest way that I can put it. But we're going to talk about all that, a bunch of other stuff as well. There were some positives in this game. We'll get to that in just a second. But first, we definitely would like to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Game Time is the best app because there are so many awesome aspects that other ticketing apps just simply do not have. There are last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. It's easy to find and buy MLB tickets for any kind of baseball game that you can find in your area. You can get views from your seat in the venue. 
You've got their lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, we just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And for the everydayers, you guys are definitely going to want to stick around through the rest of the week tomorrow. Going to have part two of our conversation with NHL YouTuber and Penguins fan Alyssa Hope. Uh, definitely check out her channel. If you get the opportunity, give her a subscribe. She's closing in on uh, 75,000 subscribers, so we'll see if we can uh, help her get there. And then for our fifth and final episode this week, we're going to discuss whatever happens between the Rangers and the Devils. They play each other on Wednesday night. I get the feeling that Matt Rempe might be back in the lineup in that game. We're going to talk a little bit about that in just a little bit here as well. But for right now, I want to shift our attention to Jacob Truba. He's been scuffling. I mean, he's only been back for two games, and I think uh, certainly he he didn't use this as an excuse after the game. He was very accountable. More on that in a second as well. But obviously missed a lot of time, hadn't played since the start of last month, and he's been back for the game against the Coyotes and also last night's game against the Penguins. But Hasn't exactly hit the ground running in his return to the lineup. Like I said, first game back was against Arizona. He was a minus two in that game. Three shots on goal, 22 minutes, 29 seconds of ice time, which again, tied him for most on the Rangers along with Keandre Miller. He also had five hits, four block shots. Th those last two stats are nice because, you know, that's Jacob Truba hockey through and through there, blocking shots and obviously playing a very physical brand of hockey. Um, but he really didn't have a great game against the Coyotes. You know, he did look rusty. And, you know, you've got those uh, those bar graphs that are made by hockey stat cards. And they basically measure a player's efficiency in every aspect of the game. And, you know, I don't think those things are perfect or infallible. But they tend to do a good job. And, and what they present, usually more often than not, I think reflects what a lot of us see while we're watching the game. And during that game against the Coyotes, obviously, they do their card after the game. And, um are the good folks at hockey stat cards had Truba ranked as the least effective Ranger on the ice that night. And then in this game against the Penguins, I mean, just not a good game. And uh, Jacob Truba, as evidenced by his comments after the game, will be the first one to tell you that. But he was a minus three, uh, four shots on goal, one hit. Uh, very notably, his ice time went from 22-29 against the Coyotes to just 17-41 against the Penguins. Uh, not counting a game where he got injured earlier this year, this was actually the third lowest amount of ice time that Jacob Truba has had since or for the entire season. And obviously, you could maybe chalk that up to him being back in the lineup and him coming back from injury, and maybe the Rangers just don't want to push him. But then again, you know, Laviolette said recently that once a player is cleared to return, you know, they play their full minutes and he treats them as being 100% healthy because, you know, they wouldn't be cleared uh, if that was not the case. So in this game, once again, hockey stat cards, and we can debate this stuff. I, I know there's people that love analytics. There's people that don't like them at all. I'm kind of in the middle. You know, I, I don't think you can live and die by them, but I think they certainly uh, have their place. Um, but again, hockey stat cards had Truba ranked as, in this game, the second least effective Ranger on the ice. He was only slightly behind his defense partner, Keandre Miller, and there was a big drop-off after those two. You know, it, it wasn't a graph that looked particularly good for the Rangers because they just didn't have a good game. But those two, by far, uh, graded out the worst for the Rangers in this game. But beyond all the stats, I mean, just look at what happened in this game with Jacob Truba. And you didn't have to wait long because... I was going to say first shift of the game. It was actually the second shift. The puck went out of play very quickly after like five seconds, but they dropped the puck again and Brian Russ scores 18 seconds into the game. Jacob Truba had the puck in the Rangers zone, tried to move it. Uh, he was kind of indecisive, but he tried to move the puck, had it stolen away. You've got Smith from the corner passing to Crosby. Igor with a nice save on Crosby, but the rebound is there and Russ scores and the Penguins go up one nothing. And in fact, we're on top for the entire game. And then not too long after this, you know, True is back out there. He's looking to go up the boards with the puck. Again, he's in the Ranger defensive zone. And Crosby is able to steal the puck away. He makes a centering pass for Brian Rust. Rust is all alone in front of the net. And he's got a golden opportunity to score. And even though Miller didn't grade out well in this game, and I, I don't think played particularly well either, he did make a very nice play here. Uh, he's got that long reach with his stick. 
reached out, and at, at the last possible second was able to fully extend, deflect the shot. Puck goes up into the netting, and, uh, you know, golden opportunity there for the Penguins, but Miller prevents them from even getting a shot on goal. So a great play there by Miller. But then Truba and Miller were out there for the second goal. Uh, Crosby to Rust. Igor Shosturkin is able to fight it off with his glove. But then seconds after this, Penguins able to maintain control of the puck. Uh, You've got Joseph passing in deep from the blue line. Crosby deflection. 2-0. Two nothing. Now, on one hand, this was a great deflection by Crosby. You got to give credit where it's due. And I don't think too many goalies in the NHL are stopping this. But on the other hand, you know, this was the result of a sustained, lengthy Penguins offensive zone possession. And again, Miller and Truba were the two defensemen out there. At no point were they able to get the puck out of the zone. And granted, you know, there, there's blame to go around here. You know, the, the forwards are out there as well. I believe uh, the Panarin line was there. But um, yeah, I mean, Miller and Truba... Obviously, just not their best night uh, as a duo, and I believe they were also out there for the third goal that the Penguins scored as well, which would explain the minus three. And of course, you know we're not talking about the empty netters here. Um, the Penguins got two of those later in the game, but all the you know the true goals that the Penguins score in this game, the non-empty netters, uh, Miller and Truba were out there for that. And uh, again, th- there will be better days ahead for this duo. Um, you know, you do have some Ranger fans that tend to take things a little bit too far. I don't think they kind of. Um, you know, they're aware of the fact that Truba's back from injury, but maybe you don't take that into consideration quite as much as you should. I'm willing to, even though Truba wasn't willing to do this because he doesn't make excuses, I'm willing to chalk this up at least a little bit to Truba being rusty and just trying to find his legs a little bit. And that's some good news here as well, because we talked about this. Truba was injured. Lindgren was injured. Gustafson still is injured, although it seems like he might be nearing a return. But Yeah, Truba and Lindgren, you know, they're missing some time. And I talked about how important I thought it was for the two of them to hopefully both get back with at least a handful of games, a couple of games, even just two or three games before the playoffs start. Find their legs, you know, just get used to playing hockey again, get back into the swing of things and not have to jump back out there playing for the first time in more than a month in like a game four, a game five, a game six, et cetera, et cetera. Um, So it's good that they're back and it's good that Truba, um, despite not playing well in these first two games back, has a little bit of time to work through some things here. Rangers have, I believe we're down to now, what is it, seven games remaining? I have their schedule open here, so I believe I do. Give me just one second. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, seven games left for the Rangers after this one. There is time for him uh, to right the ship and, and get everything right here. Uh, I do love the fact that uh, Truba, like I said, was accountable after the game. I mean, that's what you expect from a captain, but he called that early turnover a big mistake, and he said, can't happen. It's not on anybody but me. That's something I got to be better at starting the game. I think a positive for me is it's a lot of things that are easily fixable for myself that are kind of holding the team back since my coming back. My game improves. This team's going to be in good shape. So Truba basically putting the entire loss on his own shoulders there. And um, yeah, I mean, it's not all on him. I mean, the, the Rangers, there weren't too many players that I thought looked like they were at their absolute best in this game last night. But obviously, you know, Truba's performance uh, didn't really help their cause either. But again, he's got some time to get everything right. They have seven games left at this point. And the other question that uh, this whole situation begs is, do you break up Jacob Truba and Ke'Andre Miller? And there's a case to be made for that. Like I said, seven games left. If I'm in charge, which obviously I'm not, Peter Laviolette has not asked for my input, but I would give Truba and Miller, you know, maybe like three more games to figure things out a little bit here to look a little bit better than they've looked in the, in the first handful of games. And if it's still not clicking, I think at that point, you've got to be open to mixing and matching a little bit. I know at practice the other day, they went with uh, Fox and Miller together and then Lindgren and Truba together. I know there's some Ranger fans that like that. You know, Fox and Miller would certainly be a dynamic pairing. The thing that I lean toward a little bit more than that, though, is if they are going to make this change. And we'll see. Like I said, I think Miller and Truba do deserve a little bit more run here together to kind of find their game. But if they're going to mix things up, if they're going to go with different pairings, I kind of like leaving Fox and Lingren together because those two have always clicked and I think will continue to click for as long as they both uh, wear Ranger blue. But I think what you also then do, you put Braden Scheider and Keandre Miller together. That's your second pairing. And then Truba's out there with either Jones or Gustafson, depending who's in the lineup on a given night. And that might be somewhat controversial because now you're taking your captain and somebody that uh, has always been in the top four, save for a few exceptions here and there, and you're moving him down to the bottom pairing. But I think when you look at how well Miller and Schneider played together, 
And you look at, you know, Truba struggling. And again, we'll see if he can get it together these next couple of games. But if he continues to struggle, I think that that's got to be your pairing. And the other thing, the other reason why I would kind of lean that way, uh, both Miller and Schneider played very, very well uh, in the games that they spent together. And I don't think either one of them was playing poorly before they were, you know, put together as a duo. But I felt like both of them kind of took their game to that next level over the, this last handful of games here. And, um, you know, Miller has, has obviously struggled recently uh, these last couple of games now that he's back with Truba. So it's something to keep an eye on. It's something to monitor. And I think it's something that should be up for consideration among the Ranger coaching staff as far as what the pairing should be uh, in practice. Or, you know, practice. I mean, practice it first and foremost, but then also the rest of these regular season games and also going into the playoffs. Well, we'll see how they look to roll with it. And that's not exclusive to the D-men either. You know, you've got some decisions to make as far as uh, the forwards are concerned too, but that's kind of where things stand, at least from my very humble opinion, as it pertains to Jacob Truba and as it pertains to uh, the, you know, pairings, the defensive pairings for the New York Rangers. We're going to keep everything rolling in just a second. I want to turn our attention to a couple of pauses from this game. You know, some Ranger fans will act like the sky is falling because they lost one game and had an off night, but I don't think that's the case at all. We'll talk about a couple of positives that we can pull out of this game in just a second. First, though, we definitely would like to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your $5 bet wins. That's $200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube uh, or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, let's go ahead and keep everything rolling here. Uh, wanted to talk about at least a couple of the positives from this game before we call it a day. You know, I figured the Rangers have played so well recently, and uh, losing a game, like, it just feels like it's just weird, right? Like, the Rangers have basically, ever since the calendar flipped from January to February, the Rangers have done nothing but win and win and win. Uh, I think a couple of positives from this game. I'm going to start with one that I've talked about somewhat recently on this podcast. The Rangers got another... Good test against another desperate team. Now, obviously, this time around, they were not able to pass the test because they lost and clearly did not play their best. Uh, but the Rangers overall have been doing a really good job against teams that are desperate for wins. And even though they lost this one, I think it just kind of serves as a reminder that you still have to bring it every single night. You know, the Rangers, we know they're going to the playoffs. Uh, we know for sure they'll have home ice in the first round, even in a worst-case scenario. But they are trying to win the President's Trophy. They are trying to have the best record in the Eastern Conference. I think all those things uh, are important, at least to some degree. Certainly top uh, record in the East would be nice. And know that first three rounds, bare minimum, you will have a uh, home ice advantage. But I've said all along, and I maintain this, I do think it's good that the Rangers down the stretch here seem to be playing a lot of these teams that are sort of on the bubble. You know, they're either trying to hang on to a playoff spot or they're trying to make the move up to the standings and scratch and claw their way into a playoff spot. But listen to these results uh, from most recent to least recent when the Rangers have played teams that we can consider, you know, desperate. They, they have to win these games and uh, every night is a big two points on the line for all these teams. So from most recent to least recent, obviously they lost last night. We know that. But then before that, Rangers played the Flyers, another desperate team. Uh, they're kind of falling and they're in third in the Metro and they could fall into a wild card spot or even worse, fall out of it altogether. Rangers beat them six to five in overtime. Before that, they beat the Islanders five to two. Before that, they beat these very same Penguins seven to four. I don't think we can really count the Carolina Hurricanes as a desperate team, but they are fighting the Rangers for first place in the division. And you'd have to think that that's something that they would want. You know, they've won the Metro the last couple of years, and I don't think they want to give up that crown and give up home ice as soon as the second round of the playoffs. So probably cheating a little bit here, but we'll include the Canes. Rangers beat them one to nothing. Uh, before that, they beat the Devils three to one. You know, they're they're on the outside looking in. Uh, they beat the Blues four to nothing. 
Western Conference team, but nevertheless, still a, a desperate team trying to work its way into a playoff spot. Before that, they beat the Flyers 2-1, to one, they beat the Devils 5-1, to one, and they beat the Islanders in the outdoor game 6-5 to five in overtime. So it's been a really long time. This is really the only example where the Rangers, late in the season, have lost to one of these bubble playoff teams. And it goes to show that the Rangers are bringing it every night, and in most cases, maybe not last night, but in most cases, matching the desperation, matching the urgency uh, of teams that really need to win games and really need two points. Uh, and there's going to be more of these games too, which I love. Down the stretch here, might as well just go through the rest of the Ranger regular season schedule here, and they're going to play every other night from now until the end of the regular season. But after this game against the Penguins, you've got home against the Devils at the Red Wings, home against the Canadians at the Islanders, home against the Flyers, home against the Islanders, and then closing the season at home against the Senators. So basically, every team I just mentioned there, besides the Canadians and the Senators, once again, either trying to, you know, struggle to hang on to a playoff spot or trying to work their way up and get into a playoff spot. So some desperate teams down the stretch. And again, I think this is a really good test for the New York Rangers as we uh, continue our march to the playoffs. I know I mentioned this earlier, but how nice is it that we're not one of those teams that's barely hanging on or, or trying to climb over one or two teams to get into the playoffs? We know the Rangers are going to be there and um, they should be ready to go when the playoffs do roll around. I think another big positive from this one, very simple. Capo Caco scores another goal. Modest four-game point streak for Capo Caco, and it is just, it's exactly four points. Two goals and two assists in the last four games. In his last nine games, Caco's got four goals and two assists. He's also a plus four in that time. These are not otherworldly numbers, but it is the best that he has played all season. And again, if you just remove the draft tag and, and you just look at this as a, a third liner in his early 20s, doing what he's doing over the last handful of games, you're probably going to be pretty happy with that. And Capo Caco, you know, continues to play well down the stretch here and scored from a really tough angle in this game too. You know, as a one-timer. And that's something else that's very encouraging. It feels like the goals he's scoring recently are coming in a, a variety of different ways, different spots on the ice, different types of shots. So Capo Caco, uh, maybe at least somewhat finding the scoring touch uh, heading into the postseason here. Another big positive, another very simple one here, but Igor is still being Igor. Yes, he gave up three goals in this game. First goal was a really bad turnover by Truba. We talked about that already. The second, once again, was a deflection that very few, if any, goalies are going to be able to stop. I mean, how do you even stop that shot? Uh, the third one was, this is the only one we haven't really talked about. It was a goal off of a turnover. You know, the Rangers were trying to hold the Pittsburgh zone and uh, Penguins are able to get the puck away from them. Uh, there's a breakaway and Igor not able to make the save on the breakaway. But overall, another you know solid performance for Igor Shesterkin and uh, another Ranger, yet another Ranger, there's quite a few of them, uh, playing his best hockey down the stretch here. And I think another positive here, and, and this is a positive for me and also for uh, the Rempy Maniacs out there, I get the feeling uh, everybody that wants to see him back in the lineup, he's been a healthy scratch for three straight games. I really get the feeling that he is going to be back in the lineup in the next one. Rangers are playing the Devils. We know how much the temperature can rise between those two teams. We know that now there's obviously a history there between Matt Rempe and a couple of players on the Devils. I would not be surprised at all if uh, we see Matt Rempe drop the gloves. Uh, we'll see how it goes. That also begs the question as far as, you know, which forward is the odd man out? I would think probably Brodzinski. I mean, you could see if you want to give like a veteran's night off to Barclay Goodrow. You know, obviously he's been around for a while and he's been in some deep playoff runs over the years. Maybe it wouldn't be the worst thing to give him a night. Um, you know, maybe Jimmy Vesey sits for a game. I, I don't know. You know, that's, and we've talked about that too. Good problem to have. There's no obvious player on the Rangers forward or defenseman who deserves to come out of the lineup as a healthy scratch right now. But I do get the feeling, again, for all the Rempy Maniacs, uh, you guys are going to get your wish and uh, he's going to be back into the game in the next one. And if he is, I'd be pretty surprised if we get through that game without fisticuffs of some kind. So uh, we'll see how that goes against the Devils. And I think uh, the last pause I'll, I'll throw at you guys here is Rangers are still in the driver's seat for the best record in the NHL. They have, even after the loss last night, the regulation loss, they still have 104 points. The Stars are behind them with 103 points as far as the Eastern Conference is concerned. And honestly, I'm more concerned with the Rangers having the best record in the Eastern Conference than the entire NHL. I mean, it'd be nice to get the President's Trophy. It's not even that I think the trophy is cursed or anything like that. It's just that if one team in the Western Conference finishes ahead of the Rangers, the only way that will even come into play is if both those teams, the Rangers and uh, I guess probably the Stars, would make it to the Stanley Cup Finals. And at that point, good prom to have. Okay, we don't have home ice advantage, but we're in the Stanley Cup Finals. So, I look more at the Eastern Conference, and when you look at the East, again, the Rangers have 104 points. They are 
three points ahead of the Canes in the Metro Division for first place. They are also three points ahead of the Bruins, and they are five points ahead of the Panthers. And nobody else can really catch the Rangers at this point. And all those teams I just mentioned, you know, the Stars, the 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 Bruins, the Canes, the Panthers, and the Rangers, they all have played exactly 75 games. So nobody has any games in hand or anything like that. And the Rangers have a three-point lead over, once again, both the Canes and the Bruins and five points on the Panthers. And if you want to bring the Western Conference into this, a one-point lead on the Dallas Stars. But again, they control their own destiny as far as best record in the league uh, heading into the playoffs. But I figure we can call it there. Once again, if you guys would like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that's at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to the Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys. I will see you next time.